Welcome to the Renaissance and welcome to Christianity, Islam and the Negro Truth, Path 1. Remember, if the Negro is wronged, there is no one to whom he can complain. If suffering for want of the coarsest food, he dare not steal. If flogged till the flesh falls from his bones, he must not murmur. And if compelled to perform his daily toil in an iron collar, no expression of resentment must escape his lips. Charles Ball, 1837, and this is from the book, Slavery in the United States, a narrative of the life and adventures of Charles Ball, a black man who lived 40 years in Maryland, South Carolina, and Georgia as a slave, and it was published in 1837. And from John J. Stewart on the Letter Day Saints Policy on Negroes. Briefly, the Letter Day Saints Policy on Negroes is this. Negroes and other people with Negroid blood can become members of the church and through righteous works receive patriarchal blessing, enter the temple to perform baptisms for the dead, become heirs to the celestial kingdom and otherwise partake of many blessings afforded worthy members of the church, but they cannot be ordained to the priesthood, nor are they eligible for marriage in an LDS temple. Negroes and non-Negroes should not intermarry. And this is from the book, Mormonism and the Negro by John J. Stewart, published 1960. What are Negroes to other races? Have you ever tried to ask yourself, what Negroes did or could have done to the rest of humanity that made them conspire against them? If not, do you think they are like other humans in your view? Have you ever heard the United Nations or any international organization speak out for them? Have you ever had any UN resolution on any issue in Western Central Africa? If yes, what was it and how did it affect the Negroes? The issue remains that the Europeans, Arabs and Americans still do not see Negroes as human. The Negroes and their masters. Do you know why the Negroes are either Mohammedans, that's Muslims, or Christians? It is because as slaves, they have to follow the religion of their masters. Remember that in the slave master's laws, a slave has no father. How come the slave master gave them a sky daddy and they believed him? And from thence, they now have a father-in-law and mother-in-law which stems from the slave trade where the slave master needed to approve for a negro to get married. So the origin of what you call your father-in-law or mother-in-law by the slave master and his accomplices is where the slave had to go to the master to obtain permission to get married. So the master's approval is what bestows on him the right of being a father-in-law and this is why you see in sub-saharan africa today where the slave master has come to use colonialism to replace the slave trade negroes now talk about their father-in-law or mother-in-law without knowing how it came about and so the negroes also dress like master eat like master and do everything else like their master christianity Islam and the Negro Truth Before the slave masters came to capture the Negroes as slaves and as beasts lower than cattle, who was their creator or their own equivalent of the European God or Arab Allah? Did the Negroes' adoption of the slave masters' deities offer them anything good? The answer is certainly no. But if yes, why were they not freed after they adopted the slave masters' God and got baptized? Why were the Negroes who converted to Mohammedanism, Islam, no longer captured as slaves during the slave trade? And this brings us to our big question. If Islam and Christianity were true, do you think the slave masters would have allowed the Negroes have them? If yes, why does the God of Christianity and Allah of Mohammedanism not answer or protect the Negroes? If these religions were true, why do they lie about their history? their motive and their inhumanity against the Negroes vis-a-vis -vis the transatlantic and trans sahara slave trades. Imagine how the slave master and his accomplices can now tell us that Allah of the Arabs and God of the Europeans and Jehovah of the Americas and other deities of the Europeans and Arabs 
are now the same except whatever the negroes refer to the creator as that is the only one that becomes an idol and a false god have you wondered why they lie if there was nothing in there and so compared with negro truth why were the slave masters interested in giving the negroes their golden caps of christianity or islam instead of any other thing including their technology and today you can very easily see the same group will not allow the negroes to even agitate freely for freedom or anything good they are kidnapped to Nambicano, they are fighting in Ambazonia, but they turn around to tell you to support Ukraine. And remember to ask yourself, why are they not condemning Russia the same way they would have done if it was some other country, or Iraq for example, but they are now telling you to support Ukraine and how they support Ukraine. Have you asked yourself, how come they never supported Biafra? How come they never supported Ambazonia? How come they never even reported on the killings that are going on there? At least, even if they don't support, they should at least be objective. But instead, you see BBC right there in the heart of Biafra land, lying against the people the same way they did during the slave trade. And then, we are all looking at them and still running after their golden calves. How can a group who cannot allow the Negroes freedom here on earth have given them Islam or Christianity if those things could lead them to anything better than earth here? Remember, the earth does not belong to them. So the little space the Negro needs to be free and live his life the way he wants, they won't even allow him have that. But they are telling you that they could have enjoyed or shared heaven with you if it existed. If you believe that, please put it in the comment section and tell us how that makes sense to you. And on a side note on Biafra freedom, the indigenous people of Biafra IPOB and its leadership versus Simon Eba and Nelly of Febo, it is clear now that the slave master and his accomplices are the sponsors of Simon Eba and Nelly of Febu to infiltrate IPOB as control agents to divide and destroy the Biafra freedom movement. Our suggestion would be if you are or were in IPOB to stay with the DOS instead of joining Simon Eba and Nelly of Febu as agents of the slave master. The DOS, yes, may be compromised, but the goal of the slave master is to divide and destroy IPOB and the easiest way to checkmate the slave master and his accomplices is to remain with the DOS. We will tell you why we said this shortly. And have you wondered why Nelly of Febu, like then Calloway in the plantation now called United States of America, would wake up to start telling us about Edu and fighting against the name Biafra. Have you wondered why the same way then Kalowe is being used to fight against the African appellation and the black appellation as well? So the reason is simply because the slave master sees the Negroes as beasts akin to cattle that he can tell them whatever he likes and they believe. Please do not fall for the do nonsense. It doesn't matter how you see what we're saying. It's a lie. It's a fallacy. They cooked it up and we'll prove it to you. If you doubt us, conduct your own research as well. But then, have you wondered how the slave master successfully changed Abyssinia to Ethiopia and changed Ethiopia to Negroes? This is the same technique he has deployed against Biafra and the so-called African Americans today. And you can very easily see how Den Calloway is playing his own childish game by saying this shirt is black, my skin not the same color. And the other side, he says black Americans are not Africans, they are the real American Indians. Remember, the reason the slave master is fighting the black identity and the so-called African American identity is because he's afraid of Negro unity. It doesn't matter how he achieves it, that's what he's trying to do, so that nothing like the so-called African Americans and the Negroes elsewhere, especially back home in Africa, to say we are brothers because we are all blacks or we are brothers because we are all Africans. That's what he is trying to do and this is why he is now targeting a new appellation of Aborigine or Niji or any concocted crap that then Callaway is coming up with. You don't need to believe us, you just need to go back and look at how he successfully changed Abyssinia to Ethiopia and then changed Ethiopia to Negroes. Now think about it. The slave master and his accomplices are claiming, albeit falsely, that Biafra is only what he created as so-called Southeast today. Remember, there is no Negro word that it says Southeast. So you can't demarcate your place with an English word. This is English conquest. They just need to hide behind their slave hunting accomplices, the Fulanese. 
But then, Nelly of Febu is already being used to claim Ambazonia land with a do fallacy. What does that tell us? Remember, the South South, they tell you, is not part of Biafra. But a controlled agent called Nelly of Febu is being used to claim Ambazonia land, which you can see from this idiotic poster that she made. What does that tell us? It tells us that the devil is actually speaking through a serpent. And so, why is a Negro Christian or Muslim supposedly a brother to another Christian in Europe or an Arab Muslim, but not with his fellow Negro formerly Ethiopian? Why? So you see the irony that the slave master and his accomplices want a corporate existence of what they call Nigeria or Cameroon, but divided the Negroes amongst themselves. Why do you think he's doing that? To aid England, conquest and jihad against the Negroes. That's what is going on. It doesn't matter whether you believe us or not. One thing we may ask you is this. They claim that the slave trade lasted over 400 years. Did you ask yourself what were the victims doing at that time? Did they just keep quiet and not say anything? It is the same thing you see them playing at today. That's why you see their media. None of them is ever reporting on Biafra and Ambazonia. But they are busy telling you about help Ukraine, support Ukraine, but they will never mention those ones. So it is because they know how to prey on the stupidity and lack of humanity and common sense of their slave hunting accomplices, unfortunately. Ask yourself, somebody that claims is your brother, but he wants to go and help other people's brothers, but killing his own brothers. What does that tell us about them? Our suggestion, all IPOB members should remain with IPOB and the compromised leadership since all they are trying to do is to destroy the Biafra struggle using Simon Eba and Nelly Febu and the autopilot to create the divide. Continue to hold your meetings, attend your meetings, be self-motivated. Remember, the freedom is not for the Kano. The reason the slave master and his accomplices are doing what they are doing is because they are reaping the benefits of your enslavement, your sorrow, your suffering, your being in prison all over the world benefits them. That's why they are doing it. So continue to pay your dues. You can see that Simon Epa and Nelly of Febu connived to use the Mori account to defraud the people. And they are now using those monies to buy others over to come and help them subvert supposedly their own people, unfortunately. But like we told you, the slave master is a subtle beast. You see how Simon Epa has been able to defraud the Biafrans without them knowing while working for the slave master and telling you how he is working for Namdekano and Biafra. So continue to maintain the campaigns and agitation for Biafra. If it takes a little longer, the slave master will make a mistake that will give him further away. Like we told you, the slave master is never smart, but a subtle beast. Remember, when there is no enemy within, the enemies outside can never harm us. That's why they use Nelly and Simon as enemies within against supposedly their own people. And so imagine if the people had suspended the sit at home since the compromised US tried to help the slave master achieve that. By now, Nam the Kano would have been forgotten and never forget this whole thing is being done by the slave master and his slave hunting accomplices. It doesn't matter how much they pretend, why not ask yourself the whole British that claims to be Great Britain or whatever lofty names they dress themselves on borrowed ropes with has their citizen in Nam the Kano illegally kidnapped the same way they did when they were slave hunters and they can't even issue a statement. What does that tell us? It tells us that they are accomplices, they are behind it. So since it is very clear that what they want to achieve is a destruction of the Biafra freedom struggle and IPOB through Simon Eba and Nelly of Febo, the best thing to checkmate them with is to stay strong in the struggle and make sure that it is sustained. Remember, they may have planned whatever games they are playing between the DOS and, and Simon Eba at the same time with the aim of destroying the movement totally. That's why the struggle left the enemies, that is Nigeria and the Fulani and the British slave masters, to be attacking each other. Ask yourself why they are doing it. You may recall that when Nandikan was first kidnapped, Nelly of Febu started her nonsense of who could have been behind it and who was responsible. Then the compromised US expelled her, making some people pity her as though she was innocent. Remember, for her to be the one telling you who was there, who could have been behind it, and today telling you about it do. Contaming Namdekano's family and siblings, that should tell you that she is the Judas right there. So they may actually be working with the DOS, but like we told you, the best thing to do is to remain with the DOS, since we can clearly see that Simon Eba and Nelly of Febu have gone for it too. The essence is the slave master wants to divide the struggle. Remember, he is the beneficiary, biggest beneficiary of the suffering of the Negroes. 
So that's why he will be more determined than anyone else to sustain the status quo. Remember Malcolm X and Martin Luther King Jr. The slave master infiltrated the civil rights movement, convinced Martin Luther King Jr. that integration would be the way to go. When Martin Luther King Jr. realized that he had been deceived and said, I fear I may have integrated my people into a burning house, the slave master made something happen to him. Compare that with the genuine seekers of freedom in IPOB that joined the autopilot not knowing that they were agents of the slave master and when they tried to return back. Imagine if IPOB had been destroyed before they realized this. And for those in the diaspora, the indigenous people of Biafra is something akin to the Universal Negro Improvement Association of Marcos Gavi in Western Central Africa. But like we told you, the slave master will never tell you about them. You need to understand that for you to see the games of the slave master, you have to think outside the box. You have to read outside his structured curriculum, which he imposes on the children and the next generation. And never forget, the same way they sabotaged Marcos Gavi is how they have tried and are trying to sabotage Nam the Kano today. That should tell us the whole story. It doesn't matter whether you believe us or not, ask yourself. What is the interest of the British? They claim to be a first world country. They claim to have been the ones that stopped the slave trade, albeit falsely, because they just stopped what they were doing, not that they stopped the slave trade. What is their interest in Western Central Africa? That should be your question to ask. Education is not proof of any wisdom or intelligence. It just means the person is a good learner. That's all it shows. It doesn't mean that the person is more intelligent or has more wisdom than you. We will prove that. And the case of Professor Charles Soludo of Slave Master's creation of Anambra State is a proof that education is not a proof of wisdom. The government in Negro areas are mere appendages of the Slave Master. That is, Soludo is just a house Negro. It doesn't matter whether you believe us or not. The case of Osibanjo is a further proof of whatever we are saying because no matter how red they are, they only learned what the slave master taught them. It does not mean that they are sensible or intelligent or better than anyone else intellectually. It's a lie. And hopefully those who defend elections, like the shameful leadership of IPOB, can learn that votes do not count. Remember, they were talking about how Soludo was good, he was going to help them. The slave master is leveraging on the Negro's short memory for sorrows. They are still going to bring someone like Kobe in future and you will see people defending him and they will never ask themselves if it happened in Imo state happened in rivers happened elsewhere that no government has been elected that has done well when will the people learn they will never learn like we told you the slave master is a subtle beast and in the event they mistakenly put obi pito be there you will see that the killings will be more than it has always been because those people are there are mere principles. They serve as the face of the evil so that the slave master can do it. That's where the subtle beast comes in and then the blame will be on the black man. So tomorrow they can actually write that it was black people killing themselves. That's what they are trying to do. So they might install somebody like Obi with the intention to hide behind him and do the killing so that everybody will say, well, it's your people that did the killing. Whereas it is the slave master and his accomplices. If you doubt us, ask yourself, why are the British and their media not reporting on those killings that are going on there? And the case of Ukraine, we can all see how the slave master is supporting their siblings in Ukraine but using Soludo and other lackeys to kill Negroes who seek freedom in Biafra and in Ambazonia. Have you seen any African country support Ambazonia or Biafra? Have you wondered why? That's because those governments are specifically handpicked from the descendants of their slave hunting accomplices. Shouldn't you be asking yourself what happened to Soludo that was talking like a human being but as soon as he got there and the British High Commissioner to Nigeria started visiting him, you started hearing a different story. Imagine a governor who could not condemn the killing and burning of people's houses by the slave hunters now called Nigerian army but he's telling you to stop sit at home without addressing the root cause of the sit at home. What does that tell you? But then you'll be looking at him as a professor. Professor of what, if you may ask? Professor was that he went to school, learned what the slave master told him in his class, reproduced them in an exam, and then the slave master said, okay, going forward, you are now a professor. It doesn't mean that he is more knowledgeable than anyone else, and his administration is going to prove us very right. And never forget, like the case of fraudulent Mary Celeste, in few years to come, we will hear that Katrina Lang 
as a British woman came to stop people from killing themselves in Biafra. Just watch and see. The same way they claim that Mary Celeste came to tell our mothers, our grandmothers, that new humanity and the milk of human kindness poured out from their hearts and minds and bodies before the slave master and his accomplices are now the ones telling them to stop killing their twins. Remember, we told you it's a very big lie. If you research it, you'll see that it's a lie. The slave master must find a pretext. Permit us to ask you, if the Negroes were actually killing their twins, do you think the same slave master, the sponsor of Fulani Hatsmen, the supporter of the evil terror group now called Nigerian Army, could have told them to stop it? The answer is certainly no. It doesn't matter how you see it. If they have not even condemned the killings today, what makes you think they could have stopped you from doing evil to yourself? And if you are listening to those that claim that sit at home is against the people, they are destroying themselves, ask yourself why are the slave masters interested in the sit at home? But they do not condemn their slave hunting accomplices, killing innocent people and burning their houses. That's because that's the one that affects them. And if you don't know how it affects them, always remember that sitting at home is like if you had a house slave or a house maid and you asked her to go to the market or go do something, she went to lie down on her bed and start sleeping. It's like to them, as they are slaves, you are disobeying your master. That's why they are very angry with the sit at home. It doesn't matter whether you believe us or not, you are their slaves. And to better understand why they are not happy with the sit at home and they keep telling you that you are destroying yourself, whereas it is them that are killing people, they are the ones that are arranging all those killings that you see and they blame IPOB. Let us reference The Negro and the Nation by Hubert Harrison. And this was published in 1917. Here, you see why they are unhappy with the sit at home. In the first place, do you know that the most rabid, negro-hating southern aristocrat has not the slightest objection to sleeping in the same house with a negro? If that negro sleeps there as his servant, he doesn't care if his food is prepared by a negro cook and handled by a negro waiter before it gets to him, he will eat it. But if a negro comes into the same public restaurant to buy and eat food, then Oh my, he gets all hit up about it. But why? What's the difference? I will tell you. The aristocrat wants the black man to feel that he is on a lower level. When he is on that level, he is in his place. When he is in his place, he is liked. But he must not be allowed to do anything to make him forget that he is on this lower level. He must be kept in his place which means the place which the aristocrat wants him to keep. You see, the black man carries the memory of slavery with him. Everybody knows that the slaves were the exploited working class of the South. That put them in a class by themselves, down at the bottom, downtrodden, despised, inferior. So that is why they are feeling very embittered by the sit at home. They feel that these their slaves are no longer obedient to them. Why not ask yourself, if people like Professor Soludo were sensible human beings, any different from the likes of Obasanjo and the people in the slave hunting terror group now called Nigerian Army, he would have wondered why the British are telling him to kill his own brothers over Biafra, suspend the city at home while the Khan is being detained for doing nothing, whereas their own brother, that is Nicholas Sojourn, in the Scottish independence, is not being detained or harassed. The same way they are coming to use him to harass his own siblings. That's why we told you, believe it or not, being a professor does not mean the person is intelligent. It just means he is a good learner. And to the religion that we had previously shown why it was given to the Negroes at all, we see that this book further says that yet it should seem that Negroes of all Americans would be found in the free thought fold since they have suffered more than any other class of Americans from the dubious blessings of Christianity. It has been well said that the two great instruments for the propagation of race prejudice in America are the Associated Press and the Christian Church. This is quite true, so you understand where they are coming from and why the BBC can never report anything objective about Biafra and Amazonia. If the Nigerian army, which was their slave hunting terror group, renamed army in 1863, kills innocent people, burns their houses, they pretend not to see. Then the next day they come to the media and show you a staged killing of innocent people and tell you that it was done by ESN or IPOB. That's their game. It doesn't change. They are never smart. The only reason they appear to be smart is because you are gullible. 
if you started using your common sense, you will discover that they are not as smart as you previously thought. Think about it. The same church you attend with them, the same mosque you attend with them, but here they are telling you to support Ukraine. But then, they can't even report killing of your own siblings. But they would rather encourage those that are doing it to continue Why they pretend not to see. What does that tell us? And in the event you don't understand how they play that game, remember the code of Joseph planting his cup in his brother's bags, Benjamin's bag to be precise. That's exactly what games they are playing. And if you doubt what we're saying, if you know one of those like Magnus or Raka that believed in the person they claimed the IPOB removed the man's penis and all those type of lies they cooked up, we challenge him today to go and find the family and the place where it happened. You'll see that he can't find it. They normally go and take an ex-convict or somebody and stage those things and come to play it in the video. Then ignorant people who think they are fighting with their brothers will pick it up and say, oh, it is uh, this group, it is IPOB, it is ESN never underestimate the extent of their lies they can lie and they will never retract instead of retracting they will continue to make themselves look more foolish then they start planning to kill the person that's all they know they know how to kill and how to lie and you can very easily see some of their lies from this descendant of the slave hunters commenting on our channel and you see where he claims two lessons from this video there was a biafra north of the desert of seth there is no desert close to Ibo land so the Biafra was somewhere in northern Nigeria where we can find deserts. There were two Biafrans, one in the Senegambia, the other in Cameroon, or depending on the map, somewhere in northern Nigeria. The king of Biafra was signed a treaty with the British who was the king of Biafra in the Senegambia. You see, they can lie, no matter how stupid the lie looks, they will continue telling that lie. Now, Biafra is too, but all he's running away from is that Biafra is not part of Nigeria. Now, why is Ambazonia not free? He can't tell you. You can see the name thing, the same way you see Nelly coming with a do, as if in the name has anything to do with people that want freedom. But that's how the slave master operates. He leverages on the lack of humanity and common sense amongst his slave hunting accomplices, unfortunately. The question is not whether Biafra is there or not. The question is simple. We do not want to be in the same space with the slave hunters based on the lines and the boundaries created by the slave master and his slave hunting accomplices. Very simple. Whatever the name is, we need to be separated from the slave hunters. Remember to ask yourself, why are they so desperate to sustain the slave master's presence in supposedly what they call is their land? The same person is killing people in Cameroon over Ambazonia. The same people are killing people in Nigeria over Biafra. Observe that he used what looks like an Ibo name, but like we told you, he's a Fulani or a descendant of the slave hunters. We have seen him from the time he started celebrating Ijele Speaks or Udele, the one they brought back from Turkey to come and start lying against supposedly his own people, although he may have Fulani blood. We have no idea, but our interest is to show you how their lies work. And never forget, after doing the slave trade, they now turned around to claim that it could have been the Negroes that sold themselves. Remember, the reason the lie sold was because they were enemies within. So when they bring somebody that looks dark skinned and he or she comes to tell you how it could have been them that did it. The same game they are playing with ESN and IPOB. They will go and bring somebody, choreograph it. The person will say, yes, we are ESN. We killed these people. You will think they are saying the truth. You will know that they are staging and choreographing all those things from A to Z. And to better understand how the leverage on the gullibility of some so-called Negroes and the lack of humanity and common sense among their slave hunting accomplices, you will see that when they say this person did this thing and the people say we didn't do it, we have no idea who did it, they will still insist that it must be them. And the gullible people will believe them ahead of their siblings. So imagine somebody comes from Europe or America or the Fulanese that are not even indigenous will come and tell you that your brother is the one that is killing you or say your children. And your brother says, no, I have no hand in it. You are sure your brother couldn't have had a hand in it. But they will tell you, no, it's your brother that did it. And then some people ignorantly or perhaps out of stupidity, but to show you how that lie works, you see this same guy that is commenting here, you see that with that name that looks like an Igbo name, which we know is a fake Igbo name because he must have full and blood. You see where he made another comment similar to what we are talking about. And he wrote, I am still waiting for your reply. Are you going to make a video that shows the Igbos they are not the true Biafrans and end the Sabo killings in Igbo land? You have spent more than two years promoting Biafra and now that you, there is a people in Guinea-Bissau 
called Biafra or Biafra who signed a document with the British under the name Biafra or Biafra. When will you make the video? You see how unfortunate it is. Like we told you, they lack humanity and common sense. Their lies sometimes make no sense, but they will still keep telling it. He wants us to make a video to now say, okay, there is nothing like Biafra. Meanwhile, the people are still in bondage. They are not free. It's not like he has separated the people from the slave hunters. And if you are wondering where he is getting what he is writing from, if we were to produce a video to show him the Joe coordinates of the Biafra, you would think he would believe nothing changes them except the slave master, the British, comes out to say otherwise. And on a side note, you see this man, Mongo Park, a Scottish doctor, he was killed by the Fulanese. But the slave master will never talk about that because he knows without the Fulanese, he cannot do the evil he is doing in Western Central Africa today. But then, the unfortunate part is how they can get people like Nelly of Febo or Simon Epa to be helping them to say it is the people that could have sold themselves. But to understand that the religion of Christianity and Islam are both golden calves.